Hey, Man of the Mayhem here, and today we have been sent some devices from Elicro, and they are the ThinkNode M1 and the ThinkNode M2. So these are both mesh tactic devices that are used for doing LoRa decentralized communication. So I've been doing a little bit of mesh stuff with the TDEC, and hopefully it's going to help me expand my mesh network by being able to put some of these nodes up and about and have them portable on my persons. So let's take one of these away and have a quick look at what's inside the boxes. So it just felt logical for me to start with the M1. So it's got a high gain antenna, it's app compatible, it's got GPS, it's got a 1200 milliamp hour battery, it's low power, and it's got built-in LoRa. This one itself is powered by an NRF52840 chip. On the back here, we've got the same information again, and the sides are blank. Once we get the sleeve off, we are greeted by this lovely plastic box. I do like a box. Anytime that a company supplies their devices in reusable boxes, it just makes me very happy. It means I can protect the devices and it also means I can repurpose those boxes for other things. So inside here, the first thing we're greeted by is our actual quick start guide. So this tells us all about the device itself. And it shows that we have a LoRa antenna. We've got a 1.54 EPD display. We've got a product status LED. We've got a buzzer. We've got GPS and LoRa status. We've got a rotary switch, GPS switch, function button, page turn button, reset button, and a type C port for five volts at one amp. And it then tells us what each particular device does here and a quick guide of how to do it. In the back here, we've got a warning about not using the device in damp or high temperature areas. It says, do not disassemble and do not impact, crush or throw the product into fire um, and do not use if it's been submerged in water. If the product shows physical damage or severe swelling, do not continue to use it and do not use unsuitable power supplies to power the device. You know, the dimensions here, the weight, the screen, and then the battery capacity and the port type and power. So let's get rid of that. So inside the box itself, we have got our device. We've got a USB-C cable, and we have got an antenna for the actual device as well. All nicely packed inside this phone. So let's get rid of that. We know what a USB-C cable looks like, so let's remove that. And let's move onwards and upwards with the rest of the device. So inside the antenna bag, it's an 868 hertz antenna, and it also comes with two grommets. So we have a small grommet that's gonna fit inside here, just to help with some sealing. And then we have a larger grommet, which is gonna go into this outside part here. I'm just gonna use my knife quickly to poke this secondary grommet down. There we go. As with all devices that require antennas, always make sure the antenna is fully secured onto the device before using it. So let's get this screwed on so we don't cause any accidental issues in future. Right, now let's go for the peel. Stun it. and currently it's saying the device is sleeping. The outer shell is really hardy. It has got some screw holes here and some mounting points. Here we can see the GPS on and off toggle. We can see our different buttons on the side, and then we have our rotary switch as well. So let's turn our rotary switch and see if we can turn this on. All right, so we have power. Our buzz has just gone off to show us what's happening. A couple of flickers for the e-ink display. And it's currently saying that our region is unset and it's running Meshtastic 2.6.5. There we go. It seems to be up and running and raring to go. So our little jog wheel here is controlling the brightness of our screen. So as you can see right now, you can't see anything. If I bring it back down, we can turn down that brightness of the e-ink display. So it does have a backlight there. So we're just going to open up our app. We're going to scan and connect. So let's see if we can pick up this new node. The node's been picked up. Now let's put the pin in. There we go. And our nodes are now paired. Superb, let's go have a look. 
So now he's all synced up, let's move over to our other device. So next up is the M2. The M2's got high gain, it's app compatible, it's got the 1.3 inch OLED LCD, it's got a thousand million power battery, it's high performance and a lower chip again, and this one is running on the ESP32-S3 this time. Once again, nice sleeve, nice box. Here we have our quick start guide. So our warnings on the back say the same as the last one, about don't do it in fire, don't crush it, don't break it, don't submerge it in water, charge it correctly. Inside we've got our actual device parts. So we've got the antenna, the LED, we've got the status LED, reset button, the port for charging, the boot button, the buzzer, the functional button, power button, and the actual ESP32 S3 module. And then a quick guard here about how to turn it on and how to use different parts. Put that to one side. In the box this time we have the device. And then we have a USB charging cable again. So let's just move those boxes to one side and have a look at the device itself. So this time we have got our power button, our select button, and that is it on this particular one. So it really is a small compact node ready to go out of the box. So let's power it on. There we go, it's alive. And once again, this one's running Mesh Tastic 2.6.5 and currently unset. That's our information. So let's open up the app once again. Give it a quick scan. And this one is the 7A4. And there we go, it wants me to put the pin in. And we are alive. So fingers crossed we should now be able to swap between our two different nodes. And there we go, and we can. So I've just synced these both up to the MeshTastic app, just changed their region to my European region. Uh, I've now got my T-Deck in hand. And if I send myself over a test message, it just says test. You see both devices will now pick that up. And they will keep buzzing like that until we push the button to say we've received that message. So let's just stop that squeaking now. There we go. So as you can see, these work exactly as intended. The battery life seems good so far. The case is a good quality. So the main comparison about the two is that the M1 has got an external SMA adapter for the aerial. It's also got a little wheel here to be able to control the backlight behind the e-ink display. It is slightly larger, a little bit quiet, I will say, and it does have built-in GPS. It also has the larger battery. The M2, however, is a little bit smaller, has this lovely little lanyard hoop, so you can stick it around a lanyard or you can put it onto a backpack. Uh, no GPS on this, but really small, condensed packet and works really, really nicely. And of course, both these devices work as you'd expect with the Domestastic app that is on the phone. So that's it for the initial unboxing and having a quick look at these. Hope you see more about these and some videos to come as I know Ali Crow is also sending me some very interesting mesh tastic devices that will actually work with the mesh tastic UI. But I hope you've enjoyed that and I will catch you next time. Happy hacking.